Good morning. Welcome to the Delaware County Chambers networking uh, webinar. We're going to get started in just a second. We're going to let everybody kind of get into the room and uh, get set up. Okay. All right. We're going to get started. Good morning. Uh, welcome to our networking Zoom. My name is Trish McFarland. I'm the president of the Delaware County Chamber of Commerce, and we're thrilled to have you all with us uh, checking this out, learning the tips on networking. We have um, brought together some of our best and top networkers in the chamber and in the community, and we've asked them to share some tips, a story of what real networking looks like, um, not just the shaking a hand, getting a card, but actually making relationships happen. And the, the folks we have with us today are gonna to share that, share their expertise, and we will definitely take time to have some questions. Um, first on the list, probably the first time alphabetically ever, uh, Tom McGarrigal will be uh, sharing his networking tips with us. Tom, thanks for being with us today. Thanks, Trish, I appreciate it. So I will be honest, about five or six years ago, I was horrible at networking. I was horrible at business development. And in that five or six year period, I feel like that's become a real strength of mine where I'm a very good networker. I'm a very good business developer. And the point of this isn't for me to pat myself on the back or tell you how great I am. It's to let everyone know on this uh, Zoom webinar, whatever you want to call it, that if I can do it, anyone can. So I think the first thing is, you know, when I first started going to networking events, I would get super anxious about it. It wasn't in my comfort zone. So my first uh, networking tip, just relax. It's just like you're going out, um, going to a bar, have, you know, having a beer with someone. It's just another social interaction with people. Don't get in your head and make it more than it has to be. Another uh, big networking tip I would say is just to be yourself. So when I started going to these networking events, I had the idea in my head of, you know, I have to be super professional. I have to be a certain way with people. And it is important. You do have to have a certain level of professional polish. You're not just going out with your buddies, but at the same time, you have to be yourself. When I started embracing being just myself and not trying to be who I thought I wanted to be in those events, that's when I really started making my connections when I started developing business, because people know when you're not, when you're being disingenuous and you're not being sincere. So it's very important to be yourself when you go to these events. And uh, another important tip I would say is play the long game with this stuff. So what I, I always say in terms of networking, I consider myself a farmer and not a hunter. So when you go to these events, <clears throat> you always see these people that, you know, are trying to make a sale within the first five minutes of talking to someone. We all know those people, and let's be honest, no one wants to deal with that person. You know, they're trying to, within a few minutes, they're trying to close the deal. Well, no one wants to do business with someone until they've gotten to know them for a while. So look at it. When I say a farmer, you're planting your seeds everywhere. You know, you're just getting to know people. The point is, the point of networking isn't to close a deal the first time. You go to an event, you meet different people, and the more you go to these events, the people get familiar with them, that you build up a certain level of comfort. And once those people feel comfortable with you as a person and also in your field, they're going to start referring you business. But they're not going to just, you know, you're not going to give them your card and all of a sudden you're going to have five clients the next day. And I think that was one of my issues when I first started. I would go to an event, have 15 cards and think, oh, great, I have 15 new clients that are gonna, I'm going to have soon. Well, it doesn't work that way. You need to get, people need to build a level of comfort with you. So play the long game with networking, you know, just be yourself, be relaxed and look at it as a long-term process, not a quick sale because you are going to be a lot less successful if you're, if you're going in expecting business right away. Um, just kind of going down the list here. So an example, um, an example of a relationship I built through networking. It's funny. One of my fellow panels today is a great example. So Bill Sprague is going to be speaking a little bit later. I'm not sure where he, he might be next going by alphabetical order. I know he's third, but anyway, Bill's a great guy. Um, so really the thing that helped me get comfortable with networking was that I joined the young professional board of, or young professional committee of the chamber Bill was at, you know, uh, once we kind of um, 
restarted the Young Professional Committee, Bill and I and a few other people were at the first meeting. Um, Bill and I hit it off right away. Had lunch a few times, got to know each other. Bill's become a client of mine. Um, we're, referral, uh, we're referral sources for each other. And, you know, it's... The thing is, when you get it, start doing networking for the first time, you're thinking of this from a dollars and cents standpoint. And what I will say is my favorite part of networking and, and someone like Bill Sprague, for instance, I feel like I've made a lifelong friend. And build re the key to networking and business development, it's not money driven. Obviously, that is the end goal, but make it relationship driven. Get involved with people you want to do business with every day. I mean, Look at Bill. Look at the guy right here. He's got the sweet. Look at the look at that guy. He's the sweetest guy ever. Um, Thanks, Tom. <laughs> you know what? At the end of the day, just build relationships with people you like and respect, and that's going to be what you know builds your whole network for you, and make sure that your network can sustain you during bad times. You know, obviously we're going through a pretty uh, intense crisis right now, but the network you build, that's when it, that's what is going to uh, sustain you through the tough times. Uh, any networking don'ts or awkward examples? I kind of already touched on it, but you know we've all gone to the networking events, and we know those people that are trying to sell the second you get to know them. And I, once I know someone's trying to sell pitch to me within the first five minutes, I know I'm never going to do business with that person. I mean, when I have you know. Typically, what I do with networking, you know, I'll meet someone. You know, you get you do the card exchange. Then you follow up, maybe have lunch with them. And when I have that initial lunch, I might talk to them 10 minutes. You know, I'll give them 10 minutes to tell them a little, to, to allow them to tell me what they do. I get take about 10 minutes to tell them what I do for a living. But then the rest of it, I'm just trying to get to know them on a personal level. Because once again, if you don't like someone on a personal level, I don't care if you're you know, Bill could be the greatest insurance agent in the history of the world, but if I didn't like him, I wouldn't want anything to do with him. And I'm, I'm a CPA for a living. It's the same thing. Most people don't know whether I'm good or not. You know, uh, I think I am, but you know, if they don't like me on a personal level, I could be the greatest CPA in the history of the world. They're not going to want to do business with me. So make it personal, make it about yourself. Don't, don't be constantly selling because everyone hates those people. Um, and then I'll be honest, Jess, my last, the last thing I, I have here, networking for you personally and for business, I'm not 100% sure what that means, but what I will say is that networking for, per, for on a personal basis and business are intertwined. Because like I said, you're got, you never know who could become a business, um, a business referral source, a client, um, just someone in your network. So I think the thing is every single person you come in contact with, they can be a, you know, be part of your network. You know, uh, you know, I have a few neighbors that, you know, have businesses and they're not my clients yet, but you know, I, I don't, the point is, you know, when I'm talking, I'm shooting hoops in their backyard that I'm not there to close business, but you never know what something can lead to. So my, my suggestion would be that look at everything as a networking opportunity and don't get caught up in the dollars and cents. Just be yourself, be a good person. And, and if you do and, and uh, people like you, it, the business is going to come. So play the long game, just be comfortable with yourself and, and, and uh, develop a, a level of trust with people and just get to know people without an agenda. And when you do that, that's when things will pay off in the long run. That's awesome. Uh, good choice. Thank you, Tom. Yep, it, that was great. Um, I don't know if you want to be playing basketball with people in their backyard. That may not be good for business. <laughs> it's all right. He's quarantining. I trust him. Oh, perfect. It's, it's great. Um, thank you for sharing that. Um, and I want to remind everybody that's on the call, if you have questions for our panelists, we will take them at the end, but feel free to um, type them in the Q&A or the chat, and we will make sure we answer them um, as they come in or at the end. Uh, our next panelist is Jim Pace. Jim, can you tell us a little bit about who you are, where you work, and then your tips? Sure, sure. I'm a Delaware County resident for uh, you know, a long time. I grew up in uh, Eddie Stone, went to local schools, graduated from Widener, uh, was a commercial banker with Wells Fargo, um, well, actually filled a Fidelity Bank, and then First Fidelity Bank, that, that route, uh, was a recruiter for about 20 years. And now I work for uh, 
Delaware County's credit union, uh, BACU. Uh, we were formerly known as uh, Boeing Helicopter Credit Union, and I'm their business developer. Um, so, you know, I've been around a long time. I've been, you know, a long time to develop a network. And Tom is right. It is a long game because, you know, people don't realize that going to a networking event is not a sales call. Um, it's, it's really you have to do your homework. It's a mission driven event. Uh, you can have fun at these events. And, and typically I do because there's some great people that, that attend. But really, your goal is to, to, to have a plan to go in and to meet as many people as you can. And it's, it gets kind of tough because, you know, when you're when you're trying to meet people, um, it's almost, you know, people want to kind of sit and talk to you for a length of time. And that's really not the event. The event is really to kind of get to know someone, you know, uh, get some sort of common uh, commonality and then move on and, you know, set up a, a, a follow-up call to actually go to meet them later. Tom is exactly right, though. You know, you find who you like and who you want to work with. Um, and really, it's about um, trying to, uh, you know, people that are good at, at networking generally are people who are curious about people. And, uh, you know, I always hate when people say that they're people persons or whatever. Uh, but, you know, you really do have to have an interest in people and, you know, having that comfort zone going in, you know, you know, how, you know, the traffic was crazy getting here or whatever, you know, as opposed to talking about their personal finance uh, or their business finance or, you know, trying to change them from a job to a job. These are a little awkward discussions to have in, in you know, a room of 50, 60 people, you know, but, you know, what I've learned over the years is that, you know, it's more important to have people know what you do and know how to get in touch with you than have that discussion. They don't need, they need to know you have the sausage. They don't need to know how you make the sausage, you know, at least on that call, you know, uh, no one wants to know what's in sausage or a scrapple. Um, but that, that's the point. I mean, you kind of want to go there. You want to kind of put yourself out there. Um, uh, you want to kind of, uh, you know, be interesting and, and learn more about people, but, you know, we're all people out there in the end. And, and you know, over the years, you know, I, I would be in uh, recruiting events when I was a recruiter and we'd be at these, um, you know, and you'd be talking to candidates all day long. And then afterwards you'd have a, a drink at the bar with, with some of the, uh, other recruiters and, it was interesting conversations you have with, with that, but you got to know them. You got, you know, you, you learned who was doing uh, scientific recruiting, who was doing accounting recruiting, who was doing light industrial, and you were able to help people. And at the end of the day, that's what your goal really is, is to help people. So, you know, my approach is going in, trying to learn a little bit about that person, see who else I know, and try to connect them. Because really, it's about connecting them to the next person. Um, by providing value, you're going to become um, more valuable. Again, going back to my recruiting days, um, and I'm sorry, Lisa, I don't want to steal your thunder. Uh, you know, I, some of my coworkers would get mad at me because I'd spend too much time talking to somebody on the phone. And they'd say, well, Jim, you could make so much more money if you just kind of, you know, blew them off or didn't take their call. But my, my approach has always been, Hey, that person took the time or effort to call me. They took the time and effort to come down here. They took a half a day off. I'm going to give them, I'm going to respect them as a person. I'm going to learn a little bit about them. And by doing that, you know, sometimes I wouldn't necessarily place that person, but they, the referrals that I would get from those people were immense. And you know, volunteering your time, um, you know, uh, going to these nonprofit events, doing different things, um, people are going to respect that, that you really care about things as opposed to trying to make the sale. Um, I was at a golf outing, our own golf outing, uh, last year and, um, a gentleman, a story about a network event. I mean, you know, you know, everybody's kind of worrying about their golf or worry about, you know, getting their drinks, whatever. I made it a point as a business development officer at BHCU to walk to every table, you know, shake everyone's hands, look them in the eye, learn their name, learn, learn their business. At the end of the golf, uh, the next day, I got a call from a gentleman um, who's got a company here in, in Aston, and he was so impressed. He was like, "You took the time to get to meet me. You know, you didn't. I was nobody. This and that." And and we got to talking. Now, since then, I've been able to help him out with 
you know, a, a car, a car loan, uh, a real estate transaction, and this PPP loan. You know, and I that wasn't my point. I just went out there and met him. We we, we connected because we were both from Ridley. He was a Ridley football player. You know, I, I went to Catholic school, so whatever. But it was just interesting. You know, even meeting, I, I met the. Uh, you know, other folks and, you know, you have Weiner connections or you have, you know, you grew up here, grew up there. Um, and that's Delaware County, you know, uh, you know, what parish are you from? Or did, you know, what CYO did you play for? Or, or, or you know, and, you know, I've made networking events through uh, being a CYO coach, through being, you know, through a lot of things that aren't business oriented. So when you're asking about your personal and um, your business, uh, it really is, it, it really kind of combines. Um, lastly, I mean, I guess um, really what you're trying to do is help, help solve some problems for people. Um, you know, and kind of understanding, taking that general interest in them, I, you know, over to, you know, you know, don't want to take out too many people, but there's like folks like Jim Tolsky who I've met. When I first met him, we kind of, you know, kind of whatever, but since then we've become pretty, pretty good uh, networking buddies. I mean, you know, he, he does debt helpers. So he's helping people with their credit card problems. Well, I'm a banker. So if I'm really trying to help this person kind of get through some, some of the problems, he's, he's a ready solution. And, and if he's got folks who tend to, uh, you know, are bankable and he, he may refer them back to me and he knows that I'm going to take care of them. I'm not going to sell them things that, that aren't going to be valuable to them. And that's why he feels comfortable. And it's just been nice having that, that, uh, you know, you know, team, team orientation, because it's tough being out there being a business developer. I'm the only business developer for, for right now for, uh, for a small credit union. So, you know, being out there, you know, I'm out there on a, on a, um, on an Island and, you know, you need, you need to, you know, sometimes you got to get picked up, but you got to, you need to, Hey, get, get, get back on the horse. And, you know, it's nice having those folks that you can call and, you know, have, have a comfortable call, get, get excited, kind of remember what, 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 what wins you've had. And uh, you know, there are things I would talk about, but it's definitely a long game. It's definitely about, you know, it's more important who knows you than, um, than who you know. And also it's tough when you go to these networking events and there's, you know, multiple bankers or multiple payroll folks or whatever. So, you know, it's hard. You don't want to commit to business in front of, you know, one or the other. So you learn about them and, you know, maybe, maybe this payroll company is a better fit for somebody you could refer, you know, maybe, you know, uh, or maybe the other one is a better one, you know, maybe one you don't want to work with, but you know, you're, you're going to, but if you're expecting to get business from all these folks, you got to learn what the features or benefits of, of their business is and how you can, how you can uh, refer them. I was at a, um, uh, Last, last thing, I mean, I was at a uh, um, business networking breakfast and, you know, I wasn't a member there. They were trying to recruit me. I was giving leads to people at this networking breakfast, a BNI, you know, before I was even a member. And they were like falling out of their chair because, I mean, but that's what I do because I'm, I'm, I'm really more interested in helping people because I know it's going to come back to me. So that, that's what I would suggest. Awesome. Thank you so much, Jim. <clears throat> now we're going to move on to Bill Sprague. Bill, thanks for being with us. Yeah, thanks for having me, Trish. Um, so I'm Bill Sprague. I'm the owner of Risk Averse Insurance in Media, uh, which is a commercial insurance brokerage. Um, networking has really been invaluable to me. Um, you know, when, when I started the business five years ago, it was just me. And, um, you know, networking allowed me to get out to I was the brand, right? So people see the name, but actually being in front of people and telling them what I'm about and what my goals are and really getting to know people, um, that allowed them to really understand what I did and my business. Um, so in the early days, I would go to any networking event I could, anyone that would allow me in. And, um, you know, I spent a lot of time, a lot of nights, weekends, everything. Um, so, I've really become more strategic since then on the events that I'll go to um, just because there's only so much time in the day and uh, you know, it's important to spend your time wisely. So the three criteria that I really use to go to a networking events now or join a networking group are 
you know, I have to be connecting with decision makers, right? If I'm not dealing with the people that make, you know, the insurance decisions, things like that, it's probably not worth my time, right? Um, I need to be connecting with the people that are truly making those decisions, all right? The second would be, it has to be educational or motivational or something along those lines. Um, <clears throat> third would be, it has to give me an opportunity to pay it forward. So I've gotten a lot out of, um, out of networking and, you know, to give me an opportunity to pay it forward to people who are earlier in their careers or, you know, whatever it might be is, you know, something that I'm looking for when I go into networking. All right, we will give him another second. I think we might have lost him. Um, so you know what? We are going to move over to Jim Turner until we hear back That's from right. Bill, until Bill gets back on. Jim Turner is uh, the epitome of networking. Uh, we're excited to have him on with us this morning because he's also the chairman of the Ch Southern Chester County Chamber of Commerce. Um, so we're grateful that you made the time, and uh, we're looking forward to hearing some of your tips. And what you do differently down there in Southern Chester County. Well, Trish, you, can you hear me? Yep. Okay, great. So, you know, you're my first love. Um, you know, so I love Delaware County. Delaware County is my home. It's where I have grown up. It is where I've learned everything. And so, so I'm actually taking all the tips from, from Delco to Chester County. So I'm like, you know, there's nothing, nothing new down there that we're, that we're really doing. Um, but I, you know, so good morning, everyone. So, um, I, I, um, networking, I, I probably, you probably could have just had Tom, um, Tom, you did an awesome job. You could have just had Tom just kind of give all the tips and we've been done, right? Have some coffee and breakfast and keep it moving. But, um, I would say that, um, for me, the first thing is, um, as it relates to networking is, uh, go to give. The most important thing that you can do in any part of your life is not what you take, it's what you give. Because the more you give, when you, get, when you give, it comes back. Um, if you just take, you just start accumulating and everybody thinks you're the bully and they don't want to do business with you. So I go to every networking event and everything that I do, figuring out how I can help other people. Um, I don't look for anything for myself. And as a result of that, um, I've gotten a lot um, simply because um, my, my purpose is to become part of their lives and become part of their families. One of the things that's been very interesting as we've gotten into this whole social distancing and things like that is I found that my connections to my network um, that I've built based on relationships have been the lifeblood of how I've been able to sustain my business uh, during, this, during this particular time. And the reason why I say that is because people are my friends and they'll say, oh, well, Jim, you do this or you do this or uh, we know that you do events or that you're involved with um, the, you know, with uh, business development in Chester County or you're doing this or whatever. And they call me and they give me referrals as a, as a result of the fact that when we first started, we, um, we just had a conversation. I, I'll give you a quick story. Um, out in Chester County, uh, we were at a networking event at um, um, the Desmond and um, there was a young lady. She was very shy. Um, sitting or kind of sitting over in the corner. And so I made it my business to go over and say hi and, you know, just, hey, what are you doing here? She was new to the area, didn't know uh, anybody, was kind of, uh, was new in her role. She was previously a nurse and she had just become the president of Jennersville Hospital. So overnight, um, she went from a role of uh, kind of being a servant to being uh, kind of the leader of everything that was going on. And she was very nervous and, ups you know, kind of just kind of feeling her way through what she was supposed to do. She's used to being in with patients. Now she's in with CEOs. And so, and so we began just to talk about um, her nursing, talk about uh, what she loved, talk about her passion and everything else that uh, was related to all of those things. And it was amazing how um, our relationship today is like a zillion, when, when we needed um, when we needed some uh, PPP, I was needed some masks uh, for some of the police officers here in, in Chester. I was able to simply call her and she said, 
Jim, we have extra. So here, here's what you need. Now that has nothing to do with business, but it was important to life for me at that particular point. I couldn't have called her if I didn't know her on a on that particular level. And so many times, um, you know, we have to take and figure out how to build and strengthen our networks for where we're going. Again, today we are in, you know, I would love to be sitting right in front of Trish and, you know, having a cup of coffee and, you know, and kind of shooting the breeze and things like that. But we're on in virtual whatever and, you know, five different, seven different places around the world. And and so, but I still need all the connections that I have to the people that are here. So I would say the first thing is go to give. Number two, I would say that um, as, um, as Tom and I believe Joe said also, is make sure that you're building relationships that are far beyond um, the uh, actual event that you're going for that particular day. You can't do business at a cocktail party. Um, unless you're selling liquor, you can't do business at a cocktail party. So don't try to do it, you know, just, you know, go meet people, uh, let them know who you are. People buy from their friends. Um, they do business with their friends. They don't do business with strangers. Uh, they don't do, you know, I'm not gonna be at a networking event and give you my bank account um, for you to run my credit check, you know, while we're standing in a networking event. That's not happening. So, so don't do it, don't get, don't be that. And then the third thing I would say, um, again, has already been previously mentioned, is be yourself. Um, people need to know you not, uh, they don't really care about your business. Probably on, if we were to do a panel of your, of all the people that are on this call, there's probably 20 different CPAs and, uh, you know, 50 bankers and some marketing people and so forth and so on. So that's a, that's a crowded field. But if I get to know Lisa for Lisa, then, you know, I, I don't need, doesn't matter how many other staffing companies I know, I now know Lisa. So if Lisa's my friend, then I can pick up the phone and call Lisa. When I'm looking for a job, I can call Lisa. Uh, if I need to know, if I need to refer someone uh, to, that needs a job, I can call Lisa. I can say, hey, Lisa, this such and such needs this and so forth and so on. It, or, you know, as far as Tom is concerned, if I need a CPA, then, then I know him. I don't need, I don't, there's 50,000 other folks out there. So how do you distinguish yourself? You distinguish yourself by being you. So don't go with the hype. Don't go with 50,000 cards that you're passing out and all that stuff. Just, just go and be a part of what's happening at that particular moment and be genuine in what you're doing and share information. Uh, again, I spend more time at networking events giving out connections. Um, as a matter of fact, that's one of the things that folks call me the connector because if, if I'm talking with you, um, at the moment I'm talking with you, I'm probably thinking about three or four other people that can connect with you so that your business can prosper. Why? Because if you prosper, then our community is better. If your com our community is better, then when I need to do business, I know who I can call. I can stop into a shop and get whatever I need and kind of do whatever I need to, to do. I think the other thing um, when you asked about the question was about, um, you know, a, a networking um, situation that has uh, opened up uh, lots of different things for me. Um, and this was one that um, this actually happened recently, wasn't even actually it was kind of kind of unique. So uh, going back to what Trish was saying about being out in Chester County, this was before I became the chairman. Uh, I happened to be on a um, a bus tour of Southern Chester County with um, some folks from the um, U.S. Senate, local representatives, and things like that. And so we wound up at the a mushroom farm. Um, we're actually a group of mushroom farmers had come together and they were going through, you might remember, it seems like a hundred years ago now with all the things we're dealing with right now, but uh, they were going through a crisis because many of their workers had left um, due to a lot of the immigration things and a lot of other things that were going on. And so they were losing um, probably 20 to 30% of their business right off the top of the bat. And they had some real issues uh, because their workers work uh, around uh, year round but they had to use special visas and all this other kind of stuff. So we're on the bus and, um, and I'm sitting there, sitting next to a guy, didn't really know who he was. I knew he was a representative, um, but he was um, from the US Senate. And as we're talking, um, I said, you know, we gotta do something about this. This makes no sense that these businesses are suffering. And, and this industry makes up, um, these mushrooms, these guys make up 70% of all the mushrooms that are uh, used in 
um, the, on, in the, in the, the, the East, on the East Coast. And uh, he's sitting there listening, listening, and listening. And um, he says, wow, you're really passionate about this. I'm like, yeah. He says, well, do you know any of these guys? I said, no, absolutely not. I don't know any of them. I said, but if I, you know, if people are hurting, we have to do something to help. And he said, you know what? I'm going to do something. So he went back to the Senate and wrote a bill to revise um, the, one of the, some of the immigration laws. It still hasn't passed through. Um, but then he called Casey, and then he called um, Houlihan, and then he called. So he's now created this whole uh, group of people around an issue that he wasn't passionate about, that I was passionate about. And that's what networking does. It puts you in a place where you become an influencer for other people uh, in areas that they may not ever know. Now, here's the other thing that was, that's, been, that's been pretty cool with that. Um, as a result of that, I got all the mushrooms that I ever will have. Matter of fact, if you guys need some mushrooms, I got plenty of mushrooms. Uh, mushroom farmers love me, right? Uh, dairy farmers love me now. So it, it, it's all about the networking. It's all about building relationships to kind of move things forward. And that, with that, I will turn it back to Trish and Lisa. And I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing from Lisa. I haven't seen her in a long time. She look wonderful. I love the blue background, you know, way to go social. Yeah, I love it. It's go awesome. So, so with that, Trish, back to you. Kim, thank you. I feel like we all should be in person. It's great to see you and, and great to hear you, uh, hear your stories. Thank you. Um, and now we're going to turn it over to Lisa. Lisa is the master networker. I see her out all the time. Yeah. <laughs> How are you? Thanks, Trish. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Lisa Verzella, and I am a staffing consultant with Monarch Staffing right here in Springfield, Delaware County. Uh, I grew up in Delaware County, uh, lived, worked here my entire life. As a matter of fact, uh, last week, last week, two weeks ago, I celebrated 12 years with Monarch, and um, it's very timely that this webinar is taking place because I can remember when I first came on board with Monarch and part of my um, uh, responsibilities were to attend networking events with the chamber because we've been uh, a chamber member since our inception in 2001. So I can remember walking into my first networking event and I probably had that look like a deer in the headlights, you know, what do I do, who do I talk to? And it was an ambassador that came up to me and introduced themselves and started connecting me with people. And um, that was the, the best way for me to cut my teeth as it would be in networking. And um, as a result of that, I actually joined the ambassadors committee, but it taught me a lot too. Um, it's interesting that Trish says I'm out there a lot. And I think that's a big part of networking. You, you can't uh, just go to one event and be done. One and done does not cut it with networking. You have to get out there. You have to uh, let people get to know your face and get to know you. Um, I know it was mentioned earlier that, uh, you know, people do business with folks that they know, like, and trust. And the, the way to get to know people is through these networking events. Um, to me, when we first started out, I thought the mission was to hand out as many cards as you could and collect as many cards as you could. But that's not the mission for me anymore. Um, it is more about uh, meeting people. Um, and, and I do like to get to know people um, just where we have common ground, um, things that are interesting to them and to me. Uh, we find that commonality. And you know, we're from Delco, which is the land of, I got a guy for that. So if somebody asks me, uh, I need a plumber, I got a guy, you know, I need, uh, you know, a banker, I got a guy, you know, I, you have those people in your network. So uh, it really is about the networking itself, I, I think is just about scratching the surface of getting to know people. And then from there, you want to take it to a more personal level book those coffee uh, connections with them, have a lunch date, um, you know, have a cocktail after work, whatever it is that you need or uh, that will help you to get to know each other better. Um, and you're right, uh, Jim, it is about giving. It's not about taking, it is about giving. And, you know, um, that's what we're doing at Monarch is trying to help people find good employees. So, you know, 
people know what staffing is and they know what staffing agencies do. And there's a lot of competition out there. Um, so you can go to anyone to help you with that. But my hope is that we get to know each other to see if there's a, a, a synergy and a connection with what we do and what your needs are, that you would remember me and come to me for um, whether it's help with your staffing needs or do you know someone that can help me with another problem that I'm having? Um, my time with the chamber has been um, invaluable in that way, in just all of the connections that I've made and um, you know, helping people and pointing them in the right direction. Um, the hard sell doesn't work. I don't know, especially for the ladies that are on there. If you remember back in the day, you know, going into the mall, um, I remember casual corner, especially, and you'd go in and they would just jump on you and try to sell you things. And that turned me off. And I would leave the store for that reason. And, you know, it's not about the hard sell. It's about getting to know people um, and, and finding out interesting things about people. That's what I like about it. Um, I, I still get a little bit anxious when I go to networking events. I'm not going to lie uh, because you never know who's in the room. But one of the comforting things for me is when you walk into a networking event and you see the faces of people that you do know. That for me is very comforting. And I will typically start out talking to those people um, and then other people will join in the conversation. And I think that's part of um, the apprehension. People don't know how to cut into a conversation. So if you see you know, a little enclave of maybe two, three people talking and you walk up to them, they know you're there to network as well. And more than likely, they'll invite you into the conversation, unless it's something deep that they've gotten into. Uh, but typically, people are very welcoming that way and will, will bring you into the conversation. So don't be afraid, um, I think, to walk up to people and um, kind of listen in and, you know, just a warm smile and um, I hope we get back to handshakes and hugs. I'm a hugger, so this is really bothering me, this whole social distancing thing. Um, but hopefully we'll get back to that again uh, and, and, and making those kinds of connections. Um, I, I think, too, um, one of the things that was mentioned earlier was the fact that, uh, you know, when, you, when you're networking, you're you're getting to know what people do. And I'll be honest with you, I've lived in the development that I'm in for 10 years now. And I don't see my neighbors all the time because I work all the time. But in the summer, there's a pool here. And typically we go to the pool. And, you know, I've known these people for a very long time, but never knew what they did. And that, you know, networking can take place anywhere. It's not just a formal event that you're invited to for that mission. Uh, just letting people know what you do in your own neighborhood or your, your kids groups or, um, you know, uh, you talked about playing basketball, you know, while you're shooting the hoops, you're shooting the breeze too. And did you know that, you know, I, I, as a matter of fact, I'm a staffer, you know, I help people find jobs. Oh my gosh, you do? My daughter is looking for work. If you don't tell people, they won't know. So you have to put it out there. So for me, networking takes place all the time. Every, every time you're meeting people, you're networking with them and you're trying to build your network. Um, and, and that's the, the great thing about uh, being able to get out and meet people is you build that network so that you have those referral resources on your side so that if people need something, you do have that I got a guy person in your back pocket that you can share with them. So um, the, the chamber has given me uh, such a great opportunity to become a better networker. Um, I do think the more you get out there and your face is seen, people will get to know you. That's just, uh, you know, human nature. Uh, repetition is the best teacher and uh, being out there all the time and getting to know people uh, more and more uh, just strengthens those bonds sometimes and um, helps you to become a better uh, resource for other people uh, makes you more valuable. So that's my two cents. <laughs> that's awesome, Lisa. Thank you so much. And that's, it's so true. Networking does not just take place in business environments and networking events. Uh, we can build relationships wherever we go. Um, even if it's 
my kids and they're listening now, if you've seen the memes on um, social media about children and Zooms, um, that's my life. And they were trying to make me laugh at one point and then yelling at me about breakfast. <laughs> I apologize. But networking can happen even in the, the line at the grocery store. Not now because you're social distancing, but you never know, um, even the cashier, um, you know, what they do. And this is their part-time job. And it's sometimes it's amazing how those um, relationships can take place or how you can help someone. And it is about helping and, and giving um, because then it all does come back eventually. Um, we have a couple questions in the chat and Jim, thank you for staying on top of them and answering them as we go. But I think one of the, um, the things that we might want to touch on that a lot of people, especially if they're starting out in business, uh, how do you, if you have a, if you have to, if you have a direct report and you're talking to your manager um, and the, the manager says, you need to come back with, X amount of numbers. You're going to a networking event. I want to see that you've talked to people that you, you know, show me something tangible. How do you, or how have you worked around that? Because it does, it is a little tricky if your boss doesn't understand networking and how it works. How would you suggest that somebody who's particularly new um, into the world, like a young professional saying, you know, their boss says you have to do this. How would you handle that? And it's anybody. Anybody wants to go first? You guys aren't shy. <laughs> I can jump in. So Trish, I mean, I'm in a little bit of a different situation where because I'm a CPA, when you're young, you're not expected to produce right away. It's more about learning to trade. So I didn't have that. It was, for me, it's easier to do the soft sell and play the long game because I can provide value to my firm just by actually be sitting at a desk and doing the accounting work or the tax work, whatever it may be. But I would say that for a, someone in a sales position that might be get it, getting a lot of pushback from their boss about their numbers, I mean, I would make sure, obviously, you keep, a, 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 uh, keep all the business cards you're having. Um, fill, make sure anyone you get a business card for, set up a lunch. I mean, your outlook will be, my outlook is, my life is in my outlook, and your bosses can typically see that. So your bosses are going to see that you're meeting these people. And, you know, honestly, your boss might not get the long, playing the long game, but maybe the lesson in that is you need to switch companies. I mean, if, and some people are happy when I say hunter versus farmer. So the thing is when you're a farmer and I'm going to beat this analogy to death, I mean, you, you're doing all the work over time and then the pro and, and then your biggest problem is when you're not actively working and trying to develop business, the crops are flourishing around you because of all that long game work you've done. Whereas if you're a hunter, you might, you might shoot something and kill it and have something to eat that day. You're going to have to do that the next day because you're not playing the long game. So I, I just, I'm a huge believer in playing the long game. And I understand sometimes people that are more quota driven have to be a little more aggressive than others, maybe than I have to be, but I still think, Playing the long game, developing relationships in the long run is going to be a far better business development strategy. And if your boss or direct report, whoever it is, doesn't appreciate that, maybe it's not a, a fit. Sometimes the lesson is you maybe what you do at one of these network events is find a better job or or a, a firm where a firm or a business place where the culture fits your um, your needs more. Yeah, so listen, yeah let me. Um kind of jump in there so having done starting cutting my my initial teeth on in sales uh door-to-door -door selling rainbow vacuum cleaners like 100 years ago uh you know and uh and then working for uh wdas radio in sales you know for 15 years um i had those bosses uh that were all all about the the numbers and things like that and tom is absolutely right that at the end of the day it still goes back to the same thing if you can't play the long ball um, you will, you will still, you will wind up having to bat every day and it'll, it'll just keep happening over and over and over again. Uh, so one of the things that I used to do um, all the time, number one was, you know, you certainly collect all the cards. So everybody, you know, can kind of, uh, kind of see that, um, that you're kind of doing that, but I still build the quality relationships. And so, um, you know, an example of that was that I used to do, so when I did sold radio, uh, it was always about the spot buy. So you could get someone to give you a couple hundred dollars, 
but you that wasn't what you really needed in order to sustain yourself. You needed thousands, if not tens of thousands. And so what I found was that that took long relationship building. And so what one of the things, two things I used to do. One is from time to time when my boss would get on my on my nerves, I would take have him come to the meetings with me, and I would say uh, I'd say, hey, you know what? Let's go. Let's work the rooms. Let's see what you come out of it with and what I come out of it with. And it was amazing that he had the same problems that I had. Uh, you know, it wasn't, you know, so a lot of times people are asking you to do something, but they have no idea what they're really, what they're really asking because this thing was all relationship driven. Um, and so, you know, one of the, probably one of the biggest examples that, that we had is uh, actually he and I, Kearney Anderson, we're at a, at a meeting. He's working room feverishly. I'm talking to one person, happened to be at uh, that time, um, a lady who worked for Circuit City. I don't know if you guys remember Circuit City before Best Buy and all that stuff, right? So I'm sitting there talking to the lady from Circuit City, and we're having a conversation. Um, and she happened to be, she, she was happened to be the secretary of the president of Circuit City, the whole like network. And she was in Philadelphia for a special event. We started talking and things like that. And no one in our company could crack Circuit City. We, we didn't have that business at all. Because of this lady, because she was the doorkeeper, she opened the door and I wound up having Circuit City for 10 years as an ongoing client. Not because I worked the room, but because I still did what I was supposed to do, which is build friends, influence people, and help her. What I did for her that day, it just helped her relax. Just helped her relax. It's like, hey, you know what? You're in this room. You're the same as everybody else. Don't worry about it it's all good, called her up for a cup of coffee. And she goes, well, you know, what do you do? You know, so yeah. So anyway, um, yeah, so that's my Circuit City story. But uh, I would say, yeah, grab the cards. And then if your boss is really getting on your nerves, take him on the call and make him see how, how well he does. And if he can outproduce you, then he should be the boss. If not, maybe you should be the boss. Chris, I, I have a thought on this. Um, now I've been around a long time and I've had, I've been a manager, sales manager. I've been a salesperson. I've been measured, I've ran offices, and met, you know, metrics management gets to be a little tough. And that's you know, what, what you're kind of talking about. You have to make your numbers. But the reality is when you're starting out, um, you're gonna have to put more effort. You know, if you don't wanna be in sales, if you don't wanna be in the marketing role, then maybe this isn't the right role for you. Maybe there's some other role, but you've gotta pay your dues. You, you know, yes, you know, you have to make your 60, 70, 80 calls. And then on top of that, you do more long term. You got to eat today, you know, uh, but, you know, you have to remember to plan for tomorrow. So, um, you, you know, you don't, it's not one or the other. I think you have to, you have to learn to balance. And eventually, you know, so one, uh, when a, a new recruiter asked me one time uh, why I was giving leads to an experienced recruiter and why he wasn't getting the better leads. And I said, well, because she was going to close that lead. You know, I'm paying a ton of money for that lead. And, you know, you're, you're not ready to make that happen. But if I give that lead to this other woman, I'm confident it's going to get done. Now, you're, you're asking to go to like $20, $40, $50 events. And um, that's great, you know, but why am I going to pay for you to do that? What results are you going to get? So um, long term is you know, you have to kind of pick and choose your spots and a newer person in that has to, has to kind of get results. So you have to balance it, you know, so um, hitters hit, you know, it, you know, you know, uh, coffees for closers and all that sort of stuff. So you have to put in that time, um, but, you, but you have to invest in yourself. So what are you willing to do? You know, um, you know, if you're going to the gym and you're putting an hour into the gym, but you're really, you know, socializing, well, you're not putting that hour in. So you, you have to kind of appease your boss and then kind of learn to do that networking in other ways. I mean, networking is a supplement to your job. It's not your job. Um, very few people can, I mean, a guy like Jim, who, who's a legend, you know, has been around forever, you know, yes, he's got that, that, that status and he, he can get it, he can, he can be a rainmaker. But, you know, I, I, I would I'd venture to say, you know, a, a gym back in 1980 was a different kind of guy who was hustling yes. and, and burning, you know, getting those yes. soles on the shoes replaced a few different times. You know, my very first recruiting job, 
my boss told me to get in at seven o'clock in the morning and his first day he had to leave to go pick up his kids and I ended up closing up the office the first day. I didn't know. So he had some client come in with seven to seven. I didn't know that wasn't my hours. You know, about three months later, I went to lunch with my coworkers. Says, "Why do you why are you here seven and seven? I said, I "Thought that was our hours." I was rookie of the year in the country. You know, <laughs> I didn't know any better. I was I was a horrible, you know, I was horrible at memorizing scripts and all that sort of stuff. But I had just outworked everybody. You know, and that's how I got to know people. People saw who I was. You know, I you know I was going against these big four public accountants when I was recruiting, and you know they they had these scripts, they do all this and that. But I just knew how I had an innate ability to get to somebody. So I knew how to get to somebody in three calls instead of 60. But if you had the results, then you can start saying, well, you know, hey, I'm doing a long haul. But if you don't have the results, you know, get the results first and then, and then, then lean on it. So it's, it's a blend of both. That's all I would tell you. That's awesome. Thank you. And we'll do one more question before we wrap up because we do want to keep it to an hour. But has anybody implemented new strategies during the, um, the social distancing? Have you done anything differently to build new relationships? Or are you just kind of waiting and seeing and, um, you know, seeing what this new normal looks like? Has anybody done anything new? Well, so Besides my, participating I, in these? Yes. So I, I haven't done anything. I don't know. I don't, it's not a new strategy um but it is um it's it's part of the new normal so two things that i would say one is um for everyone that's on this call hopefully they're all chamber members um, and if they're not chamber members then the first thing i would say is become a chamber member um, because the chamber adds credence to who you are as a biz business and your ability to talk in a circle of whatever the chamber membership is so whether it's 2,000, 5,000, 10,000 people that are a member of the Delco Chamber, you get status as a result of being a member and you don't want to minimize that and you want to utilize that uh, as you're going on. The thing that I've done probably more than anything else is I have called, uh, either called or emailed almost everyone in my Rolodex um, and I have just checked on how are they doing? How are you? How are your, how's your family? Um, and not didn't ask for anything, wasn't looking for anything. And from that, you know, uh, you know, I've had three or four people who said, and this is relative to my what I do with events and things like that. But I had three or four people who said, um, "Hey, when we get out of this, you know, can we talk about an event we want to do for our community, or we want to do how we want to do this here, and things like that?" So again, these calls weren't, and they knew that that call was not about. Um, um, you know, about business. It was just simply about staying connected. And so if you, if I can't leave you with anything else, I would say at the, in this particular time, though we can, you know, I'm like Lisa, I'm a hugger. So I hate being distant from anyone. Trish will tell you, I will run across the room. Um, you know, she's beautiful in the ball gown and I'll still hug her and pick her up because I just love to do that, you know? And so that is, that's who I am. But you know, I do find that people can feel that your genuineness if you spend the time uh, doing that. And it doesn't take long, um, you know, in order to do that. And it keeps you connected. And there, and actually, one of the things I've found during this particular time is people want to talk to somebody. Um, they, they want, so, so this is an idea. You want to look at it for opportunity. This is the ideal time to talk to people about, um, first of all, about them. Make sure they're good. Make sure their family's good. Um, but then, you know, to talk to them about, hey, what are you thinking about? How are you going to do this differently as you're moving forward? Um, you know, it's, it's, an, it's important. It's very important. So I would, I, would, I would definitely say that that is the, for me, that's part of the new norm of, uh, of doing that. You know, contact everyone. Go back to old school. You know, go back to old school. Call, talk, email, um, but be present. Be present in people's lives because everything else is distracting us. So you got to be present. That's awesome, Jim. Thank you so much. Um, before we close, any last thoughts? Any uh, new words of wisdom? I picked up a lot today about farming, hunting. I think we're planting seeds. I'm not good at planting seeds. <laughs> if anything, Trish, it's all about it's quality over quantity. Um, it really is about forging relationships. And um, just to echo Jim's words, yes, if you're not a chamber member, now's the time. Uh, more than ever. Uh, I'm so excited to see uh, 
how this virtual world spins out. I'm curious to see how the uh, Small Business Awards work next week. I, that's going to be fun. I've never done it before. And I think a lot of people are in that boat. So I'm excited to see how it works. And we'll find out together is the way I look at it, you know? So yes, we will. Yeah, we were here <laughs> yesterday, so <laughs> fingers crossed. We're yes, it'll be fun. Out. We can't wait forever, right? Right. Um, well, on that note, um, I want to thank everybody for being with us today. Thank you for your time and sharing your expertise with our people on the call. And then we will also put this on our website and YouTube, so you will live in infamy. Um, uh -huh. so thank you so much. <laughs> Share with your friends. Um, and uh, hopefully we will see. Oh, look, Jacqueline is so good. She just put our link to the Small Business Award so you can register. It's going to uh, be next Thursday. And even if you don't normally typically attend those events, um, come and check it out. See, see how we're doing this. And uh, we'll definitely look for feedback afterwards, what we, what we did okay, but what we can do better for our next time. Because I do think our next couple big events will definitely be virtual. So thank you again for taking the time for being with us today. Make sure you're on our uh, social media and um, have a great, it's Tuesday, right? Today is Tuesday. <laughs> Pico de Mayo. Hands. This is my... de Mayo and Giving Tuesday. Giving yes. Tuesday. There That's we go. Right. I like it. This is my hug now because I'm a hugger yeah. too. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Love you guys. All right. Have a great day. Hopefully we Have see you. Great day. Take right. care. Thanks, Trish. Take care. Bye, guys.